Good evening and welcome to tonight's video which is painting a dreamscape. A lot of you guys say you want to see a little bit more of my work and offer some support and so I thought I would show you my process from start to finish of my new dreamscape which is for sale on my brand new Etsy storefront which I'm still learning about and developing. So first let's get some colour. I think my main sky colour is going to be this blue. Obviously I need a little bit of black which I don't end up using much of and other colours like this lovely white. I get through white so so quickly. Touches of pink and purple will also be seen and a couple more shades of blue, especially this bright blue and everything looks quite messy. I don't take care of things as much as I should. I'm quite lazy and fast moving in that way. But here is my nice blank canvas. I've just drawn very, very quickly some areas that I'd like my shapes to be in. But I do most of it really quite freehand and I change my mind a lot. The first process is just slapping colour on the canvas. I like to use board canvas so it doesn't have edges and it's not like hollow and paper thin because I find that really annoying in a canvas and this way I get to be quite rough with it and just wiggle my brush around, try and blend the colours. It needs quite a lot the base coat of paint and I often find it will take up half a tube of oil paint just for one painting sometimes which always surprises me because I'm used to working in acrylic or watercolour and you can spread those quite a lot but you need this to be quite thick, quite blendable and it takes a lot of time as well to get there and the wrist is sore afterwards, I won't lie. I do like to touch in other colours but really I won't know what other colours and where to put them until the end. I'm trying to make the overall impact quite dark and dreamy. I don't want the sky to be much light shared. Only the moon is going to be the glowing, 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 glowing item. I'm adding a lot of black here, but with more blue mixed on top, I know it won't have much effect. Black is actually a really hard colour to use in oil painting, and it's sometimes not recommended at all. But this is an ethereal dreamscape. It's not like any real scene or shadow, anything like that. I like to paint more out of this world, you know, really playful pieces. My art teacher used to tell me that I was really ahead with my use and observation of colour and I just love it as a way to get people to really look at my work and take notice. It's just beautiful. I love collecting oil paints when I see pen in a colour I want, I buy them straight away, even if I don't need them, because it's actually so difficult to find certain colours. I found a beautiful shade of Naples yellow a few days ago, and I already used it all, and I can't find it again. But anyway, I'm just waffling. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just waffling on. While I very slowly map out the blue and darker edges of this moonscape, and it's a bright sunny day in January here. The light, even though it's winter, really warms up my apartment and makes it bearable. It doesn't feel that cold. It's only a shame that the darkness is very soon upon me because I need daylight to paint properly. I find it really, really hard in the dark. I'm also trying to get most of this done today. Um, I don't like to drag it on into several days because oil paint takes several days to dry and sometimes you don't want to work on something when it's completely dry, it doesn't blend as well. So I'm trying to get the moon shade in there, at least mark it out. I know I might change my mind on the shape and it will take a couple of layers, but that's fine to just get the first layer on there. The board is really starting to take shape now. I've left space at the bottom for the clouds, which are going to be quite large and they're going to involve my hands and I've started already because I've seen a lot of people use their fingers in oil paint and I love the effect. It's a really good way of 
getting the colours blended faster and in shape. I'm quite good at freehand shapes. I've always found that it's quite easy for me to get circular patterns. But sometimes you can lose them with the brush. And you just have to be ready to get your hands dirty. Oil paint, which you can get obviously non-toxic versions, but it smells quite strongly and brush cleaner, which is usually like white spirit, you know, smells as well quite strongly. I personally like it, but I do feel self-conscious when I have guests in my flat and my house always stinks of paint. <laughs> I'm using this clean new blending brush to just try and shape up the moon and the area around it so that it's smooth and blended. Now these blending brushes are amazing. I have like four of them. My main issue with painting lately is the hairs coming out and getting stuck all of my paint. Now when I scan them in, I can manually remove them in Photoshop, which is fine, but it's really annoying. And these are expensive brushes as well, and I'm willing to pay the price for good quality things, but I think what the issue is, is I'm heavy handed with the brushes, but I need to be, so yeah, I don't know what to do about that issue. It looks so pretty with the sunlight dancing on the canvas, don't you think? I really love that. My happy place is definitely in my apartment, painting without a care in the world. It's what I do most of my time and my days. I'm not ready to, you know, sell my work yet. I know people people ask me out of kindness quite a lot on message and things. Um, you know, I, I've made a lot of pieces, but I don't really think all of them are worth selling. Sometimes I do it just for me. I'm working on some Taylor Swift posters, some lyrical posters at the moment, you can see in my background. I've got her concert coming up this year and I'm obviously a huge fan, as are many people. <laughs> as you can see, I'm kind of moving around the room as and where the light is moving. Sometimes it gets a bit hot and I need to move and sometimes I have to paint on my knees, sometimes on a stool, sometimes I'm stood up, sometimes I even put the canvas on the floor. I really want a nice new easel, something that's quite high up and adjustable, but for now I will just use what I've got. I probably need a couple of easels to be honest because sometimes I have to take my canvases off my stand and lean them against the window to dry so I can start a new piece. I am quite whimsical and fanciful in my activities. I often start new pieces before finishing others which means I've got about five or six unfinished pieces in my spare room right now, which is really annoying. I think I'll do an apartment tour soon and show you all of my work that I've got in store. A lot of stuff I've done has been for others and I've so I've given it away and I didn't get any scans or photos. I just did it for friends or family really. So these are the pieces I'm going to be doing for you and for the storefront. Anything you'd like to see please comment and let me know. I love ethereal scapes and pictures, you know, really nice whimsical pieces, especially lyrical pieces or poetry pieces. You know, I usually like to write little lyrics or quotes on my work, in my writing, but not this one. This one is just a very simple dreamscape. And on my storefront, I had fun putting it in different settings and seeing what it looked like. I mean, I think this makes a beautiful poster for like a kid's bedroom, like a nursery. It's very dreamy and cute. Obviously it doesn't look it now, but I promise it gets there. This is what it looks like with a thick layer of paint. You can see it still needs work, it needs blending. But I'm tired, so I'm going to have my first Diet Coke of the day. Sit back and relax. Look at my beautiful orange roses in the sun. My gallery wall makes the most perfect background for an art studio. I have a lot of work on there from Etsy, from other artists. Some beautiful, beautiful pieces that I bought from them, or I bought a digital download and I got it printed, which is what I've done as well for my own work. And their work just inspires me so much to create my own, and this beautiful space is such a pleasure to live in, let me tell you. So it's time to get some cloud colour on. I'm going to use this new angled brush to create the edges 
and I'm going in quite rough because I like to do cloud work with my hands mostly. Clouds will have a lot of blue in there. We always think of them as these puffy white things, but imagining space clouds. They're blue, they're pink, they're purple, they've got a lot of colours in. And what do you want out of clouds? You want them to be colourful and bright and random as well. They're random puffy shapes. And this is what I like to do, create this edge and go in with my fingers and sort of make that look a little bit more realistic. Well, I say realistic, but none of this is realistic really. So I've got the clouds coming in on a couple of angles and the blending brush really helps create some nice shaping and some colour blends. You can see a grey type blue there that looks very cloud-like. And if this was a more realistic picture I'd make them quite white and maybe smaller, buffier, but I like this dramatic fantasy galaxy style. And pinks and purples I definitely want in there as well. I'm using a bit of a brighter blue at first. You can see it's this turquoise shade. I've just bought this actually. It's quite hard to find a turquoise in standard art supply shops, I will say. But I think it works really, really well here because it shows quite different to the background. I want it to look quite different on the background and stand out. There, you can see that taking shape. And adding in a lot of white as I go, like I said earlier, the amount of titanium white I get through is really obscene to say that none of my paintings have an especially white feature. But like you'll see on many artists drawing, it just is needed for everything, far more than black. I've only bought one black in two years, but I've bought about five large whites. Um, you know, that I was travelling for a long time and not painting at all, so yeah, say something. You can see here that I've used quite a lot of paint thinner, some white spirit, to make this spread. You can see it looks a little bit watery, a little bit shiny. I think the only people that like the smell of white spirit, which I do, people that kind of like the smell of petrol and things like that, <laughs> and bleach and cleaner, I always just find it really cleansing. I imagine it's not doing me much good. And I have got it all over my furniture as well. This brush is a miracle. Look at that beautiful first layer blend. Isn't that gorgeous? It just is really starting to shape up as a cloud. Something I'm learning about clouds as well is less is definitely more. Trying to not go too heavy on shaping them up. They are quite invisible with their lines a lot of the time. It's easy to feel tempted to put loads and loads of line detail in, but it's really not necessary and your fingers can also do a great job at blending things just right for these kind of shapes. I've started to really love clouds and painting and drawing them every opportunity. It's a new thing for me this year. I didn't ever take much inspiration from them, but suddenly it's all I want to do. And it is a lot of fun to get lots of colour in there. I've just made a new piece somewhere over the rainbow that'll be on my store soon which is all rainbow clouds so yeah keep your eye out for that and I just keep going in with the layers often I need to take a step back and take a good good look at my work to see if it's got everything it needs and I need perspective from other people as well sometimes I'm alone for most of the day and I just have to make my own judgement call and sometimes I can leave a painting in my living room and then I, every day I'll add five more minutes of work to it which is actually a really bad habit to be honest I keep messing with something which means it takes so much longer to dry For anyone that didn't know, oil paint can take, you know, maybe five to seven days to fully dry so I have to leave something stood up, untouched for that amount of time which means I can't scan it as quickly as I might like. And I'm finding the scans are actually quite expensive as well, which is a real shame. But you know what, it's fine. They're really good quality um, and anything less than the professional grade scanner I've noticed doesn't produce good results, so it's obviously well worth the money. 
but the bigger the painting, the more expensive it is to scan, so I do have to keep that in mind, which means I might have lots of finished pieces, but I can probably only afford to get two pictures scanned in every month. But what other product do you think? I don't want to produce t-shirts or anything like that. I don't think they're very a good thing to sell. I like obviously prints and notebooks really. I can't think of anything else. The digital download option's good because it's an affordable way to purchase something and you can get it printed yourself or you can print it yourself. Um, and I don't know the cost in other countries but you know, I can then get it printed to the exact size I want, so it's perfect in that way. And here I am, just using my blender again, trying to get that perfect, perfect colour blend as the sun creeps down. And I'm finding these top clouds are a little bit more difficult to get nice, so I end up turning my canvas upside down soon. Just getting on my knees and kind of getting into the detail and I don't have to worry about getting my hands dirty I do have to worry about getting my carpet dirty as I have accidentally got paint all over it no matter how many sheets I put down I still manage to get paint everywhere it's so frustrating but I just move and flick the brush too fast I don't work very slowly as is my nature but yeah you can see it's really coming along now, the moon is starting to take shape. I'm watching some Made in Chelsea in the background. And this is where we're up to right now. I've got all the colour on there that I want. And the shapes of the clouds are in the spots I want. I have to think about stars very soon. And get some shapes, maybe some shooting stars as well would look quite nice. What do you think? And I'm not going to put a message on this one, like I said, but I really maybe should. And I like that circle as well. I think it's come out really nicely shaped. And from a distance, yeah, I like it. I think it looks dreamy. Here's a shooting star. Just a very quick blend. I might add a little bit more colour to it, but I just wanted to get them in place first. So that I knew what I was about. And for the stars, it will take a bit of brush flicking, which can often go horribly wrong, I won't lie, but with oil paint, the reason I love it is you can just go over and over and over something. So if you accidentally make a mark you don't like, you can just blend it out and keep trying. And that is something I really, really like. And for stars, I'm dotting some and then I'm using my finger to blend them out a little bit and make them a little bit more large and spread into the blue. I really like how that's coming on, but I think a few more shooting stars would look really nice. What do you think? And yellow as well. I think the stars need a few touches of yellow or gold or something like that. Here is me the next day. I'm just flipping my canvas and letting you see, yeah, I've done lots of stars now and I really like how it's come along. Some of the clouds need a little bit of touch up, but that's not a problem. I really like the pink purple blend, it really adds that dimension. And they need a little bit of shadow I found as well to add that definition and show the slow creep up to the edge. A little bit of yellow as well around the moon gives it that bit of life in my opinion. And here I am on my knees again, just blending and blending and blending. I decided the top corner clouds needed a more work and so I just work at it and work at it and work at it until I'm happy. I try not to do too much of a thick layer of paint but it's really hard. I always look at something and just want to add more and more and more but often I can take it too far when actually sometimes it's better to just keep it simple. You can see here this has come out really really cute. I really like the edges and the inside. I think the finger work actually gives it a really nice realistic look. And there it is, all finished. What do you think? I'm really happy with it. Sorry I look such a mess, but it's quite early for me. And this is the piece all finished in my beautiful lounge. And yeah, I'm going to get that up for sale very shortly. 
and there's just a link here to my storefront. I'll just show you how you can purchase this item if you were to be interested. Of course it's very early days but you can buy a print or a digital download that's just £3.50 and so I'd recommend that if you you know just want to show support or maybe get it printed in the future or something. And I took on a few little videos as well and shown how it looks in other little rooms like this. And I think it looks really cute and dreamy. And actually for this room it looks cute, but I'm afraid this wall and this room is already full of art. And I have no need of any more. So tell me what you think I should paint next and if you enjoyed watching me do this for you. And thank you so much for watching and being supportive. Good night.